Hey y'all, today we are making the true definition of soul food. We have some smothered beef nick bones, some cornbread muffins, spicy mac and cheese, llama beans with the turkey bacon, and some candied yams. If you love my recipes, check out my ebook in the description box and go ahead and subscribe to this channel for weekly meal ideas. Don't forget to turn on the bell so that you'll be notified each time that I post. Now, when I was planning this meal, y'all, I was being so bold. I was like, I am going to do some smother oxtail. I had got my recipe ready. I had wrote it down on my grocery list. I said, I don't care what the price. When I go up in that store, I'm getting oxtail today. Let me tell you, I was humbled when I got up into Costco and I saw that a four pound pack of oxtails was $40. I said, you know what? You know, I, I got humbled real quickly. I said, you know what? I think I can make it work with the beef nick bone. Okay. If you have ever had a moment like that in the grocery store, go ahead and drop me the clapping emoji. Like I need the church to clap on this one. Cause I know we can identify. Like you just sit there contemplating like, what is everything that I could do with that $40? So for $10, your girl went ahead and got her some beef nick bones and they was only three fifty dollars a pound. Now these nick bones, I feel like have a lot of blood on them. So I wash them and then I soak them in some vinegar water for about 15 minutes. And then of course you wanna clean your sink. Okay, we don't wanna spread no germs. And then I am going to dry off the nick bones with some paper towels. However you choose to season these neck bones, you just want to make sure that you don't use a lot of seasonings that have salt in them. With the other ingredients we're gonna use later, it's gonna just become too salty. So the only one that has salt in it is this one, and I'm gonna be using about one teaspoon. Next, I'm gonna put in a few drops of kitchen bouquet because I want a nice brown color to my gravy, but browning would also work. About half of a teaspoon of white pepper, about a half a teaspoon of dried thyme, a half of a tablespoon of dried onion, and half of a tablespoon of garlic powder. You wanna mix everything together really well. You know, massage that beef, okay? We want all the flavor up in there. And then I'm gonna cover this and let this marinate at room temperature for 30 minutes because I want the meat to not be cold before I brown it in the pan. After 30 minutes, I'm gonna add a tablespoon of butter to my skillet. My skillet's on about medium high heat. Now, unlike oxtails, beef nick bones are actually pretty lean, so you should definitely be generous with the butter, okay? I'm going to brown the beef nick bones on each side for about three to four minutes. Doing this step is not optional, all right? You need to do this to enhance the flavor of your dish. If you just stick these in your Instant Pot without doing this step, you will tell the difference in the depth of flavor. I'm gonna rotate them around so every side gets brown, and then I'm going to put them in my Instant Pot. We are not going to leave any of this flavor behind. So right in the same skillet, I'm gonna saute my peppers and onions for about three minutes so they can get all the fond off of the bottom of that pan. Add about a cup and a half of water into your marination bowl. You all know that we definitely not gonna be leaving any seasoning behind. Toss in your sauteed vegetables as well as a can of cream of mushroom and roasted garlic soup. That roasted garlic baby is so good. So if you can get that one, fresh herbs always have to be in my cooking. And this right here, baby, this gonna add a lot of flavor. Only put in half of the gravy packet though because it can get a little salty with the cream of mushroom and we don't want to add any extra salt. So half is okay for the amount that I have. I'm going to add in my water. I'm going to mix this together and I'm going to pressure cook this for 45 minutes. I will then let it natural pressure release for about 15 minutes. I'm going to take off the lid and saute this until the gravy thickens to my liking or you could also add in about a tablespoon or half a tablespoon of cornstarch in water. If you want to let the sauce reduce, which is what I like to do, remember the seasoning is going to concentrate. To go with this, I like to have some lima beans. Now I'm looking out for, you know, the people that don't patronize the pork today. And I'm gonna use some chopped up turkey bacon, which was wonderful in this. It has a nice smoky flavor. And then I'm going to put in half of an onion. I'm gonna saute this for about a minute before I add in some vegetable bouillon. This is the vegetable better than bouillon. And about one clove of garlic. 
I'm keeping the seasonings really simple today, just putting in a little bit of Creole seasoning, and then I'm gonna saute this for about 30 seconds until that garlic is fragrant, baby. Then I have half of a bag of llama beans, and y'all, I had this itty bitty, itty bitty amount of corn left in that bag, and I was not throwing it away, okay. Add in about a cup and a half of water, cover your llama beans, and simmer them for about 30 to 40 minutes on low. I do not like to cook mine until mine are total mush. Okay, I want mine to still be intact. I want every bean to be separated from the other bean. All right, but if you know old school, they be cooking them things down till they just be falling apart. But that's not for me. Now, today I try a cornbread mix that I have never tried before. This Crusty's Honey Cornbread. I basically follow the directions on the back. However, for the corn muffins, it says to use half of a cup of milk, but I used a fourth of a cup of sour cream and a fourth of a cup of evaporated milk. I also make sure that I used butter instead of oil. So y'all, I have a couple of different thoughts on this cornbread mix. So for one, just by following, well, mostly following the directions on the back, I would say that the texture and moisture of the cornbread actually came out really good. I didn't feel the need to doctor it up as much as I do as opposed to when I use the Jiffy Mix. However, this particular blend is super sweet. Now, I like sweet cornbread, but when I looked at the back and saw that it had 13 grams of sugar, which is basically like a tablespoon of sugar in every corn muffin, I was like, whoa. Like, I really feel like this cornbread mixture tastes like straight up cake. I don't know how this couldn't be cake. Now, it is good. It has a good flavor. It has a great texture, but if you want to use this particular one, I would say just be mindful that it is sweet. I actually ate it more like a dessert at the end. And yes, y'all, I know it says honey cornbread, but it can be a bit much if you weren't expecting that level of sweetness. If you want one that is not sweet, I would suggest trying the Southern cornbread mix. Now the back of the box had the audacity to say that you could put honey butter on these muffins. I don't know how. <laughs> that would just be way overboard. So I just used regular salted butter. I brushed it on top. These were tender, moist, and delicious. And my hubby really liked these. He ate like three or four of them already. So try it and let me know what you think. Now see, if I had known that that cornbread was gonna be so sweet, I may not have even made no candy yams because this was supposed to be the sweet element to the dish. So today I'm gonna be making just, y'all know my favorite rum candy yams. I just feel like these are indeed the best candy yams. I have a stick of butter. Y'all know I'm country, y'all. I'm black, I'm from the South, so food, you know how we do. I'm gonna add in some brown sugar and I'm going to cook that on a medium heat with a little bit of pure vanilla extract. And in this case, I do think you need to use the pure and not the imitation. I'm gonna let that cook for a minute or so before adding in the Bacardi, y'all, the Bacardi party, okay? Throw in some real rum, about a fourth a cup, but if you don't mess with the alcohol, you can put in a teaspoon of rum extract. Allow that to cook until it starts to bubble. That's when you know that sugar is going to be melted. You definitely need to add salt to balance the flavor and a little bit of lemon juice. That's going to bring out a good flavor in those yams. I'm putting in some cinnamon, some ginger, and some nutmeg, but you could also just add in a little bit of pumpkin pie spice and a little extra cinnamon. That works just as well. Stir that to combine and then add in all of your sweet potatoes. I'm using about three pounds of sweet potatoes today. I'm going to cook this on low to medium low for about 45 minutes until the yams have finished cooking all the way through. Now, about 10 minutes in, this is when you can go in and you can stir the yams. After they've been cooking a while, you can't stir them anymore without them breaking apart. These yams is swimming in juice. So as you can see, you do not need to add any extra water. When the yams are thoroughly cooked, just take off your lid and let the liquid reduce. I like my yams to have a little syrup on them. Now, to go with this, I felt that my spicy mac and cheese would pair well. Y'all done seen me make the mac and cheese, and I know y'all done made it. Everyone who's made my mac knows that it is delicious. So, I'm just going to cook 8 ounces of noodles and some water that has bouillon and salt. 
as salty as the deep blue sea. I'm going to drain it and then I'm putting in two tablespoons of butter and about a tablespoon and a half of flour and I'm just going to cook this for a few seconds until it is nice and toasted. You definitely want to get out that raw flour taste or folks gonna talk about you, okay? Then I'm going to put in a cup and a half of half and half, but you could also use evaporated milk or heavy cream. I just don't like to use only whole milk. Here I have 16 ounces of cheese. You always gotta have some sharp cheddar cheese. I like to have a little bit of mozzarella for a cheese pool, but really you can use any combination of cheeses that you have available. Mix this together until everything is melted and then season with a little pepper and a little bit of vegeta. I love mac and cheese with vegeta. I don't make it without it. It is just so good. A little touch of garlic powder, okay, just to your taste. Don't get too crazy with it, okay? You know this ain't Alfredo. And then mix this together and put in your crushed red pepper flakes. I'm using about half of a teaspoon. If you want it real spicy, put in one teaspoon, okay? If you don't like a lot of spice, just do little shakes, all right? All right, honey, so now this sauce is well combined and delicious. I know you've tasted it as you cooked. You can see it has a little cheese pool. And then we are gonna go in with that macaroni. You wanna stir it until it is well combined. And if you need to adjust the thickness, maybe you want it a little looser, you can add in a little bit more half and half or evaporated milk or whatever dairy it is that you are using to make your macaroni. How often did you eat macaroni and cheese growing up? I don't think I ever had macaroni on a day that was not a Sunday growing up as a kid. It was pretty much a soul food Sunday dish only. But I've heard that some people be having it like almost every day as a regular side dish. So let me know, y'all. This is a small amount of macaroni and cheese, so I'm just going to put this in a little loaf pan with some more um, Munster cheese slices on top and put on a little paprika for that decoration. I'm going to bake this at 375 degrees for about 20 to 25 minutes. And baby, you are going to have a deliciously gooey, little bit spicy macaroni and cheese that you definitely can bring to the cookout. Are you going to be making this recipe? Are you gonna make it with this meal? Are you gonna add it to a different meal? Now y'all, I know you see it. This is so good. You have to try this. You all know that I love you and Jesus loves you. And I thank you so much for joining this channel and supporting me. God bless all of you and goodbye.